All right, Robert. Well, one of the main criticisms of you and of me is that we're Islamophobes and that we spread Islamophobia. Now, uh, according to what we hear in the media, where does Islamophobia come from? Well, according to the media, David, it comes from us. It comes from a small cabal of very well-heeled, wealthy, highly financed individuals who, for some unknown reason, have decided to spend their life smearing Muslims and defaming Islam and to create a hysteria about Islam that is wholly unjustified by the facts. And these people, uh, you and me and, and uh, Pamela Geller and David Horowitz and Frank Gaffney and a few others, we've been so successful that there are now very widespread negative opinions of Islam among Americans who would otherwise have no idea, if it were not for us, that there was any problem with Islam whatsoever. And uh, this has to be where, where charges of racism uh, come <laughs> in, right? Because yes. if our criticisms, if what we say has really nothing to do with Islam, then our agenda must come from somewhere else. And yes. So it must be something like racism if, as if Islam is a race or something like that. But it mu we must have some other agenda by which we're just randomly attacking Muslims. Yes. Everyone has agreed in the establishment media that any distaste for jihad terror or for the Sharia oppression of women or of non-Muslims or of any other group is wholly and solely based on racism. And they forget that Ibrahim Hooper of the Council on American-Islamic Relations is a Nordic fellow from Wisconsin or Minnesota and that there are Muslims of all races and that jihadis have also been of all races. This is all thrown out the window and the equation is oversimplified to have brown Muslims who are noble and good on the one side and white racist redneck Islamophobes on the other side who for their own purposes of greed and avarice have decided to demonize the noble brown people. So that's where Islamophobia comes from, according to the media. That's right. I cooked it up right here in this office. <laughs> this is the nerve center. Now, an interesting question arises. If we look at the Muslim sources, we find that there's a different source, a different origin of Islamophobia, and that it didn't come from you or from me, it actually came from somewhere else. So we've got a bit of a mystery on our hands. <laughs> now let's look at, not according to us. That's right. Let's look at, according to Muslim sources, where Islam, this fear of Islam, this fear, fear of things of Islam. Islamic. That's what a phobia is, ladies and gentlemen, mm -hmm. a fear. Why would anyone fear mm -hmm. Islam? Well, tell us from the Quran. And, and keep in mind, a phobia is an irrational fear, right? It's not, here are my reasons that I'm scared. It's something just, I, I don't even have any reasons for that. I'm just terrified of this, right? Yes. Where does that sort of thing come from? Let's go to the Quran. Chapter 3 of the Quran, verse 151. Allah speaking here. It's Allah. <laughs> Allah says, We shall cast terror into the hearts of those who disbelieve. Terror, that's, that's a terror, fear, is it right? not? Now notice it's not, people are going to sit around thinking about their reasons for being concerned about the spread of Islam, and they're going to conclude that Islam is dangerous. This is just a fear, a terror put right in their hearts by Allah himself. A strong, that makes them terrified irrational, of Islam. unreasoning, unfathomable terror. A fear beyond an ordinary fear, but terror we are talking about. And where does it come from again, David? Uh, Allah. From Allah. So Allah creates Islamophobia, and he's happy about wait, it. Wait, we, 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 we have to read the entire verse because maybe, maybe there's maybe something in the rest of the verse. Maybe we're taking it out of context. Yeah, yeah, let's go ahead and read it. So, we shall cast terror into the hearts of those who disbelieve. So it's just people for terror. who don't believe. And why? Because they joined others in worship with Allah, for which he had sent no authority. So Their abode will be the fire, and how evil is the abode of the Zalamun. So in chapter 9, verse 30 of the Quran, when it says that the Jews say Ezra is the son of Allah, mm -hmm. and that Partners. the Christians say Jesus 
is the son of Allah. That's associating partners mm -hmm, with Allah. Mm -hmm. And for doing that, for being, of course, no Jews have ever said that, but for being an ordinary Orthodox Christian mm -hmm. and believing that Jesus is the son of God, what Allah is saying is that he will create, cast into your hearts, Islamophobia. Directly into your heart from Terror. the power of Allah. Now, just so you don't think that Allah had the wrong approach here, Muhammad appealed to this as the source of his victory. So we read in Sahih al-Bukhari, number 2977, uh, notice that this, uh, Bukhari puts 2977, the introductory verse he gives is chapter 3, verse 151 of the Quran. We have it right here. We shall cast terror into the hearts of those who disbelieve. And here we have Muhammad say, I have been made victorious with terror cast into the hearts of the enemy. And the enemy here are people who do not believe, including Jews and Christians. Why do Jews and Christians fear Islam? Why are they worried about Islam? Why are they scared of the spread of Islam? Not because of Robert Spencer, not because of David Wood, because Allah put that fear in directly into our hearts because we associated partners with Allah. So Muhammad is saying, I have been made victorious through Islamophobia. Isn't that extraordinary, Isn't that given amazing? the fact <laughs> that in the West, the charge of Islamophobia is used to intimidate people into thinking it's wrong to oppose jihad terror. That is actually a primary way in which Muhammad is emerging victorious. I, I have to say, uh, if, you, if you are an atheist, if you're an atheist, you should read this and you read that something 14 centuries ago that's, that's used as a weapon 14 centuries ago from Allah, filling people with fear, and this is how Muhammad is going to be made victorious, and that 14 centuries later is still helping Islam spread, you need, if you're an atheist, you have to start wondering, maybe there are some spiritual forces at work here, because this is diabolic, it's genius, it's brilliant. Diabolic, evil, clever. evil. And there's more. Really? There's Chapter more 8, about verse terror? 60. There is, David. <laughs> <laughs> Chapter 8, verse 60 of the same noble Quran. Against them make ready your strength to the utmost of your power, including steeds of war. Let's just pause there to note that those who say that jihad is primarily a spiritual struggle, you don't really need steeds of war. Mm -hmm to try to better yourself and to become a holier person yeah, closer if, to Allah. If your jihad is going to the gym, you don't need steeds of war. Unless right? your car broke down. Yeah. What do you need the steeds of war for? To strike terror into the hearts of the enemies of Allah and your enemies. Strike terror. So to create Islamophobes mm -hmm. among the enemies of Allah and your enemies and others besides whom you may not know, but who Allah does know. So... Allah strikes terror directly into our hearts, but Muslims are also commanded by means of hot war with steeds mm -hmm. of war to strike terror into our hearts to create Islamophobes. So we're told by the media that we're the source of Islamophobia, but according to Islam, we're the, the source of it. The source of Islamophobia is Allah and Muslims, and this is what made Muhammad victorious. And they give it to us in order to make Muhammad victorious. And so think about this. When the media says that we're the source of Islamophobia, they're saying that Allah and Muhammad are wrong. And that is Islamophobic. What could be more Islamophobic than to declare Muhammad wrong? And yet the New York Times, the Washington Post, CNN, all the rest of them, guilty of Islamophobia.